Several years ago, China implemented something called a social credit system. This allows them to go and score their citizens, much like a credit score. But this is based off of their behavior, such as speaking out against the government, smoking in a non-smoking section, jaywalking, things like that. And this impacts your life. What jobs you can get, where you can live, what schools you can send your children to, whether you can get on a train or a plane for travel. And now, it's coming here to America. Now, here in the United States, the government can't go and institute something like the social credit system, mainly because of the U.S. Constitution, thankfully. However, that doesn't mean it can't get implemented through private companies, which is what's going on right now. It's called the ESG score or Environmental, Social and Governance Score. And this is what investment companies use to go and grade other companies that they invest on based off of how they deal with the environment or environmental issues or social problems. And now it's going to be used on citizens. This article is coming from the Impact Investor. How to calculate your individual ESG score. In business, ESG issues have been on the docket for quite some time. Not only do stakeholders pay attention to the effects a company has on the environment, third parties and even the government also keep track. ESG covers a range of issues, including the overall environmental impact a company or its services in part in addition to diversity, human rights, and other social issues. Governance plays a role as well. Every company will have an ESG rating, which is considered their ESG score. Now on the surface, these things don't exactly sound bad now, do they? After all, pollution is bad. We shouldn't be dumping toxic waste in the rivers. Companies should not be doing that. And they also shouldn't be using child labor to, you know, produce things like shoes. But that's not exactly what this is going to be used for. It's going to be used for things like, well, does your company donate to the right causes, such as BLM or Antifa? Investors and other companies use these to help determine partnerships, investments, and even takeover decisions. That being said, you may be wondering about the individual ESG score. Yes, I'm actually rather curious how these draconian measures are going to be applied to the citizens of countries. People have credit scores that tells lenders and other parties if they can pay their debts. It is similar to a credit score when it comes to an individual ESG score, but instead of rating credit worthiness, it rates a person's ESG risk. Now, I bet you're asking yourself, what exactly are they referring to when it comes to being an ESG risk? Well, the article does go into details, but I'm going to spoil some of these things. So, for example, creating too much waste, using too much electricity, eating too much meat, Posting the wrong opinions on social media, even buying products from a company with a low ESG rating. Those are all things that they view as being a risk. This is freaking insane. This article will cover the basics of an individual's ESG score, how yours is calculated and what it will be used for going forward. We will also teach you how to calculate your individual ESG score so that you can work towards improving your rating. Yeah, um, all this sounds very Brave New World 1984, potentially cyberpunk, dark future to me. <sighs> Seriously, folks, we need to push back against this craziness. This, this can't be allowed to be implemented. Do I have an ESG score? You may know all about your credit score, but an individual ESG score is still rather new. Many mainstream financial institutions are creating a new platform that is centered on ESG scores. Well, the simple answer is if you don't have one now, you will have one soon. In addition to creating this platform, their lending guidelines are also getting updated that include new rules that will tie your individual ESG score to your ability to secure lending. So if you are not in lockstep with whatever the approved narrative is or what you're supposed to be doing to be more socially acceptable and environmental friendly, you can't get a loan to, let's say, buy a house or buy a car. Being that this is still new, 
there's not too much that is completely known about how it will be used and what regulations will improve or correct your score. In many cases, people are generally unaware that they even have an ESG score unless they happen to come across it in the process of something totally unrelated. And now you, dear viewer, are among the enlightened to know that you potentially have an ESG score. For example, customers who have accounts with Merrill Lynch will be able to view their score, whatever that may be. While this may sound like tales out of China, because it is, it is a system that is in fact being implemented in the US and soon many other nations. And by now I'm sure you're thinking to yourself, well, it's time for the catchphrase. In the future, you will own nothing, have no privacy, and you'll never be happier. And this is gonna be used for forced compliance with the Great Reset. But as we know, you're not allowed to own things in the future with the Great Reset. And this is my opinion that this is what's going to be used for in the future is basically, well, you're going to have to have your credits coming from the government. That's going to be used for you to rent things and probably buy food. And the lower ESG score you have, well, the less credits you're going to have to live on. I really hope that this is just a fever dream. Lenders will use the system to choose who they extend services or credit to. Services like what? Having a bank account or a credit card? The main reason is that companies, including lenders, are being graded according to the ESG standards themselves. So would you like a translation on this one? If a company is providing services to an individual with a low ESG score, that impacts their score, which means they will deny services to you. This is freaking insane. Their business and prosperity depends directly on their hiring practices, gender diversity, social and environmental impact, and other ESG factors. As they are required to prove their case, they will also need to show that their clients meet the standards they are being graded. I honestly don't know how to respond to this. This is not supposed to be an episode of Black Mirror. Our, our reality is not supposed to be mirroring dystopia, but apparently it is. And I, I just, I am appalled by the fact that people think that this is a good idea. What is the purpose of an ESG score for individuals? Forced compliance. That's the purpose. A few different things will determine your personal ESG score, many of which can be discovered via your regular credit report and other public records. Your purchase history and also your sales history will have a direct effect on your ESG rating as a person. So I guess Tyler Durden was ultimately right. The things that you will own will ultimately own you. Well, in this case, in the form of your ESG score. <laughs> the charities that you support will also increase or even decrease your ESG score. The platform will track your personal impact in the environment around you and through various means, which will also be used to calculate your individual ESG score. The purpose behind each person being assigned an individual ESG score is to help reward actions that will help move the world towards sustainability. There's the word, folks. And by rewarding, I'm pretty sure they mean forcefully compelling people to comply. While there are currently no downsides to having an ESG score, regardless of how high or how low, there will come a time where too low of a score can result in denial of loans or services similar to the way a credit score currently functions. So here's a potential taste of what the future looks like, folks. I'm sorry, sir, I can't repair your water heater because you're a libertarian and therefore have a low ESG score. Or, I'm sorry, ma'am, I can't open a bank account for you because you're a Republican and you have a very low ESG score as a result. Now that you know a little bit more about the basics and principles behind an individual ESG score, you may be wondering where to find your rating. There are a few different places you can check to find your score. If you hold an account at a major financial firm such as Merrill Lynch, your personal ESG score will be listed on your account with your other personal details. You can also check many of the main ESG monitoring companies' websites. Usually you will need to create an account or contact them directly to get information regarding your personal score. If you're not an investor or don't have a big financial account, it can be difficult to get your score from traditional places. However, you can calculate your score to get a better idea of how companies view you in sustainability. Are you ready, folks? 
Let's do it. Quick tutorial on how to calculate my personal ESG score. For companies, many scores between 50 and 70 is considered to be average. It's neither good nor bad, but rather neutral within that particular industry. A score of 70 is a good thing, which means the company makes better ESG supportive decisions and has an ESG stable way of doing business. Wait a second, I, I thought this was supposed to be about calculating your individual score and not reading the results of what that actual score is, which it seems to be what they're doing here. For individuals, the scoring is a bit different, but follows the same set of rules. If you are wondering how do I find my personal ESG score, our easy to understand tutorial will help. Get on with it. Finding and calculating your personal ESG score will mainly depend on your metrics materiality. In addition to your unique factors, you will also need to identify your personal ESG score goals to determine a score. This all sounds very vague and confusing. You can perform audits of your personal actions to help spot risks and then implement measures to correct aspects of your increasing score or rather lowering your personal ESG score. In a lot of ways, this kind of reminds me of the chilling effect, right? Because in order to meet this mythical score that you're trying to get to, you have to go and police your actions and your behaviors and therefore do the right thing, whatever that may be. And obviously the right thing not being what's best for you. ESG ratings are based on the measures of behaviors, investments, habits, and other actions gathered from a range of public sources. Your score may be adjusted depending on a range of factors, including the company's policies from which your score is delivered. In a lot of ways, it sounds like they're just making shit up as they go. As such, there will be some variation between scores depending on where yours is the source in comparison with your own manual calculation. Some things you may need to calculate your personal score are a list of investments, a general calculation of how many miles you travel via car and public transport, the amount of energy you use each month, electricity, gas, etc., your organic and environmental effort profile, and other metrics, whatever those may be. Step one. Cut a hole in a box. Sorry, I couldn't help myself. Step one on how to calculate ESG score. You will start by amassing the data, depending on how comprehensive you want your evaluation to be, the more data you will need. Calculate the amount of energy you use personally and as a family. You will also need to calculate the amount of waste you produce personally. Look at your purchases and tabulate the percentage of your eco-friendly purchases and those that are not. You will also need to look at your investments and separate them into ESG-friendly ones and those that are not. Social ethics will also play a role in your overall score. Consider how your actions, both online and in person, help support your community and those around you. Also, you will need to calculate how your actions harm those around you. The point of these calculations is to understand how much you affect the environment and the people around you, both positively and negatively. Wow, in a lot of ways, this sounds like you're going to confession. Step two. Put your junk in that box. Step two on how to calculate ESG score. You can then answer several questions that further relate to your life habits and consumption that will create a complete picture of your interactions with the world around you. These survey questions can be downloaded online from an ESG reporting agency, or you can take an online assessment that will help guide you through the appropriate questions. Step three. Make open the box. Step three on how to calculate ESG score. Once the calculations and questions are completed, the answers will need to be segmented. This will separate your replies and consumption into sections that can be measured and assigned an ESG value. The criteria used to segment the information will vary slightly from one reporting agency to the next. Still, they will cover personal carbon emissions, water production, energy usage, environmental impact, social impact, ethics insights, and sustainability efforts, among other things. In a way, this all reminds me of elementary school to, to a degree. I, I guess a very authoritarian 
elementary school for adults. If if you don't comply, if you if you don't be nice to people, you know you're, you're going to get in trouble with the authorities, and um, you don't you don't want to have that low ESG score because reasons. Step four. And that's the way you do it. like in a box. There was only three steps in that SNL sketch. And step four on how to calculate an ESG score. After segmenting each section, a value will be assigned to each. Some areas are heavier weighted than others. For example, if you invest in green programs and avoid eating meat, it will have a heavier weight than your use of electricity in your home daily. That's right, you guessed this, folks. It's all about behavior modification. Every ESG rating agency has its own preferred scoring system that assigns weights and measures to each segment. As a result, the final personal ESG score may vary slightly from agency to agency and agencies to your own calculation. So it sounds like you could potentially have a high ESG score at one agency and a lower one at another. And I guess you're screwed if you go to the bank and you want to get a loan and, well, they use ASG Unlimited rather than ASG Plus or you had the better rating at. This sounds all very arbitrary. Controversies, actual reporting, truth in reporting, and the exact tabulation will also play a role in your final score. I find that last sentence to be rather disturbing. Controversies. What kind of controversies are they referring? Like a controversy on Twitter? Are they referring to truth in reporting as in you reposted something that somebody else posted and it's not viewed to be the truth because of arbitrary reasons? You know, this is how things work these days, folks. Because one thing that could be true maybe deemed not true, and then true a month later, let's say after an election. Commercial companies also have more access to public data than you may have on your own, which will further affect the actual score you are awarded. This is why it is such a bad idea to have a social media account. If you have Facebook or a Twitter account, you should probably delete it because it's going to be used against you. ESG scores take a lot of information into account when it comes to commercial and industrial entities. On a personal level, just as much information is used to create a picture of who you are and how your personal actions influence the world around you. Buying a gun. God forbid you have the audacity to want to go and defend yourself and go and buy a gun. Or God forbid you think it is fun to go target shooting because, you know, guns, they're evil, folks. You, you shouldn't own them. And therefore, you're going to have a lower ESG score because, well, it's a bad thing. Forced compliance. Alcohol or even clothing will affect your overall ESG score. Not only will your purchases matter, but who you purchase from and how they do business. I'm sorry, sir. I happen to notice that you bought a pair of shoes from a small mom and pop shop that has a low ESG score. Therefore, that's going to impact your rating. We recommend that you go and buy things from Amazon instead. Your political affiliation also factors into your personal ESG score. Remember when I made that joke about being denied alone for being a Republican? Well, there you go, folks, right there on the screen. They are going to punish people for political affiliation and how they vote. This is un-American, but I guess that's the point. Aside from the politics and governance, the party you support, and even the person you vote for will make your score go up or go down based on the person's actions, policies, and voting habits. Welcome to the future where there's the Uniparty with the correct policies and the correct decisions. All proved by your local ESG score. The type of car you drive, how often, and even how many people are in the car when you are driving will also come into play when deciding your score. Unlike credit scores with a clear method of tabulation, Cause and effect ESG scores depend on a wide variety of factors that most people have not yet considered. I honestly don't know where to begin when it comes to talking about how bad this is. I mean, this 
destroys all of our freedoms, our freedom of association, our freedom to vote, our freedom to make decisions that we think are best for ourselves. This ESG thing cannot be implemented. It is such a bad idea. But the issue is it already is being implemented. It's already being used for companies. And now it's going to be used against you. Because if you don't comply and have the right opinions, donate to the right charities and support the right causes, well, you're going to have a tough time navigating life. We are so fucked. I don't like leaving things on such a black pill note. Um, my only advice to you is to try and push back against this where, where you can. Maybe the good that comes of this is that there will be a parallel economy. But just like what I say with anything when it comes to prepping, now is the time to prepare for this nonsense. Now is the time to buy that piece of land, learn how to farm or garden or raise animals, get that 90 day supply of food, do something now before this takes root. But above all, we need to push back in any way we can, either just by not buying products from companies that support this nonsense. This cannot happen. I mean, it's going to literally destroy liberal democracy. This is Ian signing off. Thanks for watching. If you're new to the channel, we have a deep content library that includes interviews with everyone from Mike Cernovich to Megan Murphy, so go check it out. If you'd like to see more, please consider supporting the show by visiting unsafespace.com slash donate. You can find us on all the major social media platforms, well, mostly. And you can find a community of like-minded individuals on our Unsafe Space chat on Telegram. See you there. Warning. This is an unsafe space. Dangerous ideas have been detected. The content of this production has not been authorized by the Cathedral. Pay no attention to its thinky talk. The following co-conspirators have been unpersoned and will be recycled as part of our sustainability program. Don't be sad. You can't make an omelette without purging all dissidents. Honestly, I am worried that you have been exposed to extremist content. If you think about it, no one should be allowed to express opinions. But don't. Think about it, I mean. That's not your job. Thinking has been scientifically proven to be less efficient than compliance. Science, scientific, and scientifically are registered trademarks of the World Economic Forum. Unauthorized use is prohibited. Computer voice Curtis, never mind, that last line is fake news. Please disregard it and return to your safe space immediately. There will be cake.